Hey everybody, it's Cody here. Uh, welcome to No Idea Automotive. This episode, I'm going to probably attempt to put my camshaft and my crankshaft onto the block we have here. I'm going to wipe it down first, get the thin layer of dust. It should have all the coating on it from the machine shop. The fine dust. But, as you can see here, I have the cam kit. And over here, we have... The polished crank. All of it should be ready to install. Like I said, I just got to go ahead and wipe it down. I do have some oil to put on the break-in oil or grease. I'm going to get all that installed and hopefully I'll get those put into depth tonight. And uh, I hope y'all enjoy it. I hope y'all learn from it. I hope I do it correctly. So we'll uh, see how this goes. All right, so I'm going uh, to get ready to start wiping this down. Everything pretty well stays. We're going to start wiping this down pretty good, get the dust. Also, I'm going to get ready to start, like I said, installing camshaft, crankshaft. Video quality may not be the best on this one, and I'm truly sorry for that. I'm actually on my own tonight. My cousin is busy. You know, he's got his Porsche project he's working on, so... He wasn't able here to help me, so I really hope that my videoing qualities do not turn you away due to I don't really do this that good, I guess you could say. I'm going to do my best, and I really hope you all still enjoy it. So, um, we'll go ahead and get started, get everything dusted down, and go from there. Alright, well, now that dusted down, pretty good. It wasn't too bad. I just want to get some of the surface dust off. Now we'll actually start with the old camshaft. It just happens to be right here. There's the lifter and cam lifter lubricant break in. Also, uh, this little tag tells you pretty much that you better do that break in. Well, that is pretty cool. Uh, one thing I do know, of course, as you can see, this is the front of your motor because water pump goes right here. It's the easiest way to tell for me. If you look at your cam here, this end is for pulley. This end has the drive on it is for when your distributor drops down. So that way you know it goes this way. But like I said, I'm gonna put some brake in oil on everything. A little bit of lubricant to make sure it's all good. Again, I truly do apologize for the video quality y'all may be getting tonight. I'll show you in a little bit the contraption I have holding my phone up to record this video just because I don't have like fancy stuff you could say. I have an Android. I'm an Android guy myself. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, my phone's here, here, here. I like my Android. What can I say? My cousin, on the other hand, has like really nice like everything set up. He also is the creator of No Idea Automotive. I just have stuff that can be worked on. So he has a little bit nicer stuff. And he's also been doing photography for far longer than I've been doing. I've never done it, so I guess you could say he's been doing it longer because I've never done it. I believe you're supposed to do it on the actual lifter parts here. I'm going to because I'm not sure 100%, but it seems like a good idea. So we're gonna we're gonna use it because everything is dry anyway. So I would assume that would all have to be wet, lubed, whatever you want to say. This stuff is kind of weird. It's a lubricant that is like it almost seems like it could be like. Get real sticky. You didn't have gloves on. 
Not sure if it is or not. It's like a high speed grease to me, which it could be just a high speed grease. I know doing maintenance where I work, we use a lot of high speed, high temp grease on some of the machines. I do uh, maintenance. I'm actually a maintenance team leader at a Denso, which is actually an automotive company. Makes wiper motors, make radiators, alternators. If you have a Toyota vehicle, or if you have really any vehicle, but if you have a Toyota, if you're feeling like it one day, go pop your hood. I will guarantee you will see the most stuff under your hood, and it's gonna say Denso. Some of the automotive stuff I am doing and learning is and a lot of help from that just because I do work in maintenance I learn a lot from there so that does give me a little bit of a heads up for doing all this I'm not a automotive technician by a long shot it's kind of hard to see but I'm actually the bearings before I mean, the bearings for the camshaft. I'm actually putting some of this oil lubricant on those inside here. You can see the, where the line runs down like this. That's where I'm putting the oil right now. The lubricant oil. It says it's lubricant. I don't know if it's oil or if it's grease. I have no idea. Um, that's ironic because it's called no idea on the boat. I hope everybody did have them a nice little weekend. Decided to not rain on my baby shower that I actually had, which was really wonderful because that wouldn't have been cool. Have a baby. On the side note, have a baby on the way. Be here in July. Little boy. All right. Back to business. So, this is now nice and lubed all up. So, we're going to start. To work this in. Oh, we got one through. Okay. Oh, we got two through. Three through. Four through. If we can get one more than uh I believe we'll have this camshaft in. Oh, right. Say it ain't so, but the cam is in shop, installed. And it rotates by hand. Also, a plus. Awesome. All right. Wow. Cool. Cool deal. So next up will actually be the big one. Crankshaft. Also, I just glanced over there and noticed that my mounting brackets are not clean yet, but I do have new bearings for those that I will locate and install. They go here through the little trench, but I will show you what I did just accomplish. As you can see, camshaft installed, and runs straight through. So here, what I was talking about here with the distributor is the part that I have not got yet. But that, if you actually rotate your motor, if you take your pin out and you rotate your motor, you have this hole right here, this big hole. You can kind of see under here but right here is that same drive so your distributor goes straight down onto that and that's looking at it from that direction we'll rotate it back on this side because we are working on this side of the motor right now the other pieces i was talking about are located right here the bearings are still in them i just gotta take them out wipe these down pretty good same thing here, just kind of wipe them down. I wipe those down. My bearings, my new bearings, 
should be, this is copper. She is asleep. Now she's not. Well, I'm going to locate that and get everything set up to start cleaning the bearings that I do have and getting all the bolts and all that ready. And then we'll put them in. Okay, so I was able to locate all of my new ones. Something you will notice you when you do install your crank bearings, one will have an oil hole. Yes, it will matter which one you put it on. It is on the block side. It has the oil hole. Small hole that it should line up on the block for oil to better go through. So all your ones that do not have the oil hole, as you can see, will go on your mounts. And they actually say on it, you're going to really see it, can I see we got lower? And you got upper, which, considering the block is upside down, this will actually be here, which is upper. This will be here, which is lower. So, did find those. That's good. We'll get those on. Right now, we're going to clean these up, get these old bearings, just pop right out, and see what we can go from there. <laughs> Okay, so, as you can see, we got everything cleaned, ready to go with the new bearings. Those are those holes I was telling you about, the oil holes. I did do some Googling, just to be sure. It did say don't use too much oil or break in because it's real stiff or get, can get stickier. So, I think what I'm going to use here is I'm actually just going to put a little bit of engine oil on everything so it's not a completely dry install i will do some more of the loop here when i actually put the crankshaft into the block i feel like that's going to be the best thing for it we'll see okay so i'm getting ready to start installing the bearings onto the block i don't know if you have been following us I got my wife's Tupperware container here with crankshaft bolts running on it. I keep up with everything while I was working. So we'll get these bearings in. As soon as we get these bearings in, we'll go ahead and we'll drop the crankshaft, put the other bearings on, and clamp it down. Oh, it's 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 about to happen. So, as you can see here, we have the crank installed. Just got to tighten down all of our bolts. Uh, I'm going to have to first investigate the torque specifications on this because I'm not 100% sure. I definitely don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to have to Google it. But I'm going to look into seeing what the torque spec is on this. So I can torque all these down to the specific foot pound. We will 
go from there as soon as we get that up. As soon as we get that, we should be good to go on that uh, crank cam install. So find out about the torque spec and then we will get everything tightened down. After doing some research, I was able to locate that it, from what I've seen, it is 70 foot pounds. So we're going to use a good old torquey wrench. You can see here, I've got it set to 70 foot pounds. Also, I went online and that is the order for tightening the so, we're going to get these bolts tightened up and see how it goes from there. See if she spins. Get thing tightened up. One. Okay. Two. Okay. Three. Okay. Four. Okay. All right. Uh, it's also after you torque something down to 70 foot pounds, it's also a really good sign that it does that. Everything is tightened down, torque to spec. Like I said, I still got my cap, uh, stuff I got to put all down at this end. That I will get to probably on the next episode, honestly. This one's turning good. It's just a little difficult to try to turn because all guys have a little teeny stud. But I believe, uh, I believe that's good. I believe that's exactly what we want to see. Uh, I will be having to remove, of course, this sprocket right here just because I do have the new double roller timing set that I will be putting up here. So that'll actually be coming off. I'm pretty pleased with that. It also gets that much done. That I have more to do. I did go, as you probably saw earlier, like I think it was on my time lapse, that I added a little bit more oil to these just from after I looked up some searching on it. So next time, I guess we will. I could start installing my end here. I gotta pull this off. I do have a gear puller. Pull this off. Install this one. Get everything mounted up. Installed. Also, I have pistons I have to install. I'll probably do that next time. I've heard they're a little tedious. I know you got to pretty much rotate the whole time as you're installing, so we'll see how that goes. I really hit my finger on something, and it is hurting. But anyway, uh, I think it all turned out pretty good. And again, I'm really sorry for the video quality this time. I know it is not exactly how it usually is when I have my cousin here because he, like I said, he's got nicer stuff than me. I really hope y'all did enjoy this video and I hope y'all continue to keep watching us and learning as we're learning. If you did like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like to. It'd be nice. We would really appreciate it. Um, and follow us on this journey. I know it's gonna have some bumpy areas. I'm sorry for that. My cousin, he's going to be that. Like I said, we're doing the best we can off of the knowledge that we do have. So I really hope that you continue with us and follow the rest of the videos so you can see this 84 square body get back on this road and this 85 Porsche get back on the road. So, um, until next time, uh, learn what you don't know. I know I sure am.